Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. Together again. We got yes, the, finally. Got the band back together. Uh, we're going to give you another daily dose of dismal Disney. Apparently, Bob Iger is making comments to the effect that Disney is too expensive. No. What? You don't say. I, I had no idea. But he's the one responsible for jacking the ticket prices. Yes, exactly. And a lot of the costs. No, it's the other Bob. Honest. Wasn't me. No, yeah. it was totally him too. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about all this. Geeky's got a lot of stories pulled up about it, and we're gonna go down the uh, rabbit hole or mouse hole. Yeah, I, I'm gonna say too. I think it's funny because people keep saying about why Disney isn't fighting the whole Reedy Creek thing so much, and they kind of like are going along with it. And we'll talk about that in a minute too. I think there's it's more about money and uh, other things that are coming at them that they need to focus on instead. Yeah, um, there, there's, they've got a lot. They've got a lot coming. There is a, a train barreling yes, toward so, them. Before we get into it any further. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 297, yes. almost 300,000 subs. We're getting close to 298, I think. Oh, we are? Okay, I think. Good. good. Keep saying that we are, and then we don't. Yeah, we're getting um, there. So make sure you're still subscribed because they do that kind of craziness and unsubscribe people. So apparently, okay, um, Bob Iger was at the Morgan Stanley media conference, okay? And this is what he said. Uh, he said, I always believe that Disney was a brand that needs to be accessible. And I think in our zeal to grow profits, we may have been a little bit too aggressive about some of our pricing. And I think there is a way to continue to grow our business, but be smarter about how you price so you maintain the brand value accessibility. So this is in stark contrast to the years of price hikes and the uh, you know supply and demand and basically the undesirable mix or whatever they were. Calling yeah, that it. was that was JPEG. But yes, but I mean th this isn't new. Like when when Bob Iger's talking about things being too expensive, except for like a few things recently that JPEG did, like with raising prices over at Galaxy's Edge, which Iger walked back for Disneyland only. Um, a lot of the price hikes was under Iger. Yeah, most of the price hikes were under Iger. Uh, in fact, uh, Genie Plus was greenlit under Iger. Uh huh. Um, the parking, paid parking at the Disney hotels in Florida, that was that was Iger. That yeah. was 2017. I remember people were furious. They're like, we pay three, four hundred dollars a night for a moderate hotel, and you're going to charge us an extra 25, 50 bucks to park. What and yeah, and then they kept raising. They went up like the annual passes went up like 25. Yeah. percent It was ridiculous. And this was all under Iger. It was all yes. around the same time. Yes. He just started just just gouging the hell out of everything. All right, you had this article we had from uh, 2019, and this is when they they did the big big huge price increases. Yeah, this was uh, Pete Warner, who's actually I don't know if he still is, but at the time he was the top Disney travel agent. He mm -hmm. runs the Diz Boards, the Diz Podcast, uh, Dreams Unlimited Travel. And he went on a bender. I remember this was, you know, a couple of years ago. And he was basically like, Disney is outpricing people. They have disdain for their customers. Mm -hmm. Pete Warner basically told them to go pound sand that he was going to push, I think, Universal. And again, this was all under Iger. This is before Chapek. Chapek mm -hmm. did not you know, come into the role or get thrown into the role or get thrown in front of the bus until February of 2020. Right. And so, at that yeah. point, all, a lot of the price hikes already been initiated. Yep. Genie Plus was an Iger thing. Yes. Uh, everybody wants to blame Chapek for that one. That was an Iger thing. So Iger was also talking about things that he, that they're going to control how many people were in the park so they're not overcrowded and things like that. That's why you had the park you know, past reservation system. And that Genie Plus is a great way to make sure you can ride attractions and all that. So, yeah, they're going to maybe limit how many people come into the parks to say that they're doing something about the crowds. But they're not going to get rid of Genie Plus because that offsets all the costs of if they do keep the ticket prices down, if they do limit the amount of people in the parks. They need Genie Plus and that, like, you know, pay front of line, lightning lane access. They're going to keep those and they'll probably just keep raising the prices so they hit whatever the ceiling is because they need that to offset the losses they're going to make when they, when they limit, uh, you know, park availability and yep. ticket prices. Yeah. Um, I just think it's funny that they're, they're going on now about accessibility when I do remember distinctly, because this would have been when we were doing media with Disney distinctly, they were chasing the whales. They wanted the, the people that were going to drop $10,000 plus mm -hmm. on a vacation 
they were building almost exclusively building deluxe resorts. Well, we we see it, still see it now with the uh, Galactic Star Cruiser. Yeah, and then they're not lowering the price on that accessibility, but not on the, our things for whales. Yeah, <laughs> Disney for whales. Um, but yeah, I mean, and there have been articles out there talking about how the only way you can really get the full Disney experience now is go get a VIP tour guide. It Three, four hundred dollars an hour or whatever mm-hmm. it is. They keep changing it, raising it, and I'm just, that's something else. They raised the tour guides under Bob Iger significantly as well. Yeah, this you is know? this is Bob undoing all the damage Bob did. But then letting people think Chapek did it. Yes. I mean Chapek did a lot of things on his own, don't get me wrong. But he gets blamed for a lot of things that was Iger. The the tone was set. The tone was set by Bob Iger. And and a lot of it was yeah, you know, just pure corporate greed. A lot of it was, you know, trying to pay back ridiculous debt for buying stupid stuff like mm-hmm. Fox, you know? And um, yeah, so here we are. Which takes us to this. Okay, so everybody's like, a lot of people are asking, well, you know, why isn't Disney, you know, fighting back and all this other stuff about the the Santa's thing? Honestly, they can't at this point because it's already been a done deal. Um, but I'm, I guarantee you they're going to still get the, what they want because Iger's in there and Iger knows how to... So, yes. He knows how to play the game. He knows how to get what he wants and to, you know, offer up something to get what he wants and to leverage and everything else. So they keep their mouths shut and keep their heads down. They can blame it on. They can let the Santas take the blame for everything. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we would be more whatever company, but we can't. Because the Santas. Because politically he's trying to stop us. So they're going to keep their heads down and get everything they want. They're not losing much. They keep saying that. People are like, well, they're losing those city statuses. They're not even cities. Okay, yeah. they had it set up in a way, and now that they don't have Reedy Creek, I don't think it really matters so much because look at it, their point of view. Disney has some issues going on. Um, we're gonna talk about that coming in a minute, but a lot of it relates to the money around the parks. That's why they kept jacking up the prices. Okay, we have Epic Universe coming for them. Yes. Like lately, they Josh Demaro has been out there. Oh, oh, Tron, Tron's the tip of the iceberg. We have so much coming. Well, not really. They have uh, that was official. They have the um, Moana water attraction, which is basically a walk through water attraction. Yay! Where you know, like there's water things involved as a and, and a big statue and some other stuff. So it looks pr- it looks pretty. Um, I mean, Epcot needs something because it's really hot there, so that makes sense. They have uh, the Splash Mountain retheme. Which is just a retheme, a reskin, and it's going to be probably done the cheap. Oh, um, side note. I want to talk, and I forgot to tell you because this happened late last night. Uh, somebody sent a video linking to somebody, and I'm not going to say the YouTubers. The rumor was they were supposed to be internally fighting to save Splash Mountain. Yeah, like Ken Pot Rock over at Disneyland was supposed to be like, oh, he was challenging yeah. Iger. And- Which, you know, to me did not make, I mean, honestly, if one of the two parks was going to go all in on Tiana, right. it would have made sense for Disneyland because it, Splash Mountain is right next to New Orleans Square. That's what I thought, too. I'm surprised they didn't do that one first, honestly. Yeah, and I think it's just a money thing, honestly. I think, Or if they don't have enough attractions, they couldn't take that one offline. But uh, oh yeah, they did have a bunch down that are down for refurbs or down for um like reskinning or like the things for the holiday and stuff. Yeah. They had a lot of things down, so they could not take it down. Yes. Yeah. Um. So I mean, again, if I if if I were a betting man and I would say, okay, well, one of one of the Splash Mountains are going to get saved, I actually would have bet on Florida's getting saved over Disneyland's. Florida's so, was the better version too. Sorry, it, it was objectively it was. Um. So anyway, uh, somebody sent a link to this video out to a bunch of Disney bloggers and whatever. And one Disney blogger in particular, I don't know if to say who, but they said they confirmed with Disneyland that, no, it's, it's bunk. It's absolutely positively. Well, Disneyland's happen. not going to say it's true. No, but they have other insiders, I guess, at Disneyland. Uh, like, no, there's I, I knew going, about there's this. There's no fight going on. It's, it's it's an old rumor. It's been going around for a couple of weeks. I knew all about it. And again, like you said, I thought the same thing. I thought it was weird because... Disneyland makes the most sense as it's New Orleans Square. And that's where we, way before, way before they announced this re theme, um, it was well known that Disney kind of wanted to replace Flash Mountain with Princess and the Frog back when the movie came out. Yeah. It's a long standing rumor. There, there are theories. I, I don't know if it's, you know, 100% true or not, but there are theories that they even, you know, made Princess and the Frog take place in New Orleans specifically with an eye on, hey, if this movie does well, let's, let's, finally replace Splash Mountain. Because they, they have, I mean, to be honest, especially in California, not so much in Florida, I don't think, but in California, they have been looking to replace Splash Mountain for right. a while. Um, and there were concerns even when 
And there's a whole story. There were concerns even when they were developing the ride. They're like, do you really think basing a ride on Song of the South that we just vaulted? Yeah, I never understood that. Is is a smart decision. But really, it came down to they had a bunch of animal animatronics. Right. They had to reuse. Yeah. And that was the only thing they really had. They're like, well, we'll just take the people out of it. It'll be fine. Nobody will notice. And for the most part, most people well, I mean, didn't. A lot, but I mean, the, the Br'er animal stories themselves are not anything that's considered no. bad. And even, even Song of the South wasn't actually on a slave owned plantation thing or that didn't take place on that or anything like that. It was, it was, you know, it after was that. Not it was, better, I know, but, but still yeah. it was after the fact. Um, yeah, it was probably not the smartest thing, but it's been a rumor. It was rumored for years and years. They were going to do this. This is not a surprise. Disney tried. And every time that rumor came out, people would push back with a vengeance. So as soon as there was a, uh, civil unrest let's just say and they found the opportunity to leverage uh racism yeah they took it <laughs> so, yeah you know. i mean this is this is where i'm torn because part of me is like you know I, I don't think it needs to be done and i am and this is it we're going down another road here but i don't think it needs to be done and i know they're going to do it on the cheap and it's gonna be all screens, that's what's gonna happen you know? it's gonna be on the cheap and i think that's people are upset about because they know what they're gonna do I mean, if it were like, if it were as good, if not better than Splash Mountain with a ton of animatronics and like really, really cool stuff. And, you know, I, then I'd be like, okay, this is cool. But it does sound, it, does. it has to be at this point. People will accept nothing less. If Disney thinks they're going to cheap out on this one and people are going to be okay with it. Oh. Well, look at Mickey and Minnie, you know. Oh, yeah. It the sounds good on paper, oh, but yeah. it's just all scripted. I, mean, I, mean, I don't like Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Right. It's, it's, I think it's boring. It's, it's okay. It's, it is cheap. It's like very, it's very. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's all done on the cheap. Um uh, the so, great movie ride was far superior. Oh, absolutely. And then but you, we knew the end was near because they stopped fixing stuff and it's like Yeah, we were there and stuff wasn't all not working. But anyway, back anyway. to this. So um you have tomorrow talking about to the iceberg. So we have the Splash Mountain retheme, we have the uh Moana attraction. Tron's coming open, but it's been in the works for years and years and years. Tron is is a clone of a years old ride from Shanghai. Right. That was based on the Tron sequel that didn't do well at the box office. And they, they had the ride in development while they're working on the movie because it takes years for this mm -hmm. stuff to happen. They thought the movie was going to be a big deal and it turned out it wasn't. Uh, um, you know, it was, I mean, people have been asking for the Tron coaster, but it really was kind of lazy because it's already been done. Right. They just have to do it again. And now you know? the only other thing I know of is they're saying for, uh, you know, Disneyland, they're going to try to do some Avatar stuff, but they're not really saying what. Um, just that's gonna be amazing, and that's about it. So when they have, talk about all the stuff they have in the pipeline, they really don't. And when no. they did D twenty three last year, they their big announcement. The only thing they announced that they actually announced was a figment meet and greet, which I still think they might do something with during imagination, which they need to do. They're gonna have a popcorn bucket wall. Popcorn bucket. They don't do on the walls anymore. Now it's just popcorn buckets. No, because they're they're moving on to other. Because so, they make money on popcorn buckets. Yes. They don't yes. make anything on the walls. Well, charge people. Charge people to stand up against the. They wall. aren't doing the walls anymore. But yeah, the popcorn buckets is the thing. And now they had some artists. They had a thing on. I've shared it on Twitter today. They had an artist come in and draw Figment and talk about Figment, and that's like thirty second clip. And I'm like, why? Because now you care about Figment. right? Because they're going to do something with it, which is what they're trying to leverage. Because what do people? We need to get goodwill back. What is the one thing people have been asking for over and over and over again? During imagination, be fixed. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do that probably on the cheap. Uh, yeah, they'll do it on the cheap. They'll they'll do it half ass. They'll throw IP into it. There have been rumors that they were gonna do, and and I was like, well, Inside Out's kind of come and gone, so maybe we're safe from them turning. Oh, well, they're making another movie. They're making another Inside Out, so it'll be yeah, it'll be Inside Out. And then out there's with the Mu then there's Muppets as a rumor. It is an option too because there was like some some talk about that. So I don't know, but they really don't have a lot of announcements. No. Why does this matter? Because we're taking a long way around to get to a point. Why it matters is because Universal Orlando is coming with Epic Universe. Okay. The, they have the new uh, Super Nintendo uh, World area brought over to Universal Studios um, Hollywood. Mm -hmm. That's I think that's open now. And yep, now we it. have uh, Universal Orlando bring Epic Universe. And now this yep. Epic Universe is a whole park. Yep. You're going you're to have a Wizarding World area that has the Ministry of Magic. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have uh, the new Mario world as well, but you got Donkey Kong with it also. Mm -hmm. There's still been rumors out there that they're, that they, since they have Pokemon, they're using it in Japan. Yeah. They could do something with Pokemon. They have it in a parade over there, but there's been talk they could retheme things at, in Universal in Orlando to Pokemon. Yeah. Pokemon's complicated because it's, it's co owned. Mm -hmm. It's Nintendo and Game Freak. So it's like. But they have a deal with Universal yeah. in Japan already. Yeah. So they're doing yeah. it in the parade. So there's what? It would hey, not be money hard. Money talks, right? I mean, 
I mean, could you imagine if you had something exclusive for Pokemon Go or for Switch or something that you can only download at Universal? People would go just to they would. They would. Mm-hmm. I mean, people are crazy enough to be like, oh, there's an exclusive Pokemon or there's an exclusive skin or there's a, something I can only get if I go to Nintendo World. So I'm going to go down and Right. And they're going to do it. it. Yeah. So we have, you know, they're going to do How to Train Your Dragon area and there's Universal Monsters area and there's other areas they have named what they were going to be. But I could definitely see them doing something with Shrek or Minions or something else. So it's just going to be this big, huge deal. And some of the IP they have, like Mario, they did a study and before and I have it that more kids knew who Mario was than Mickey Mouse. Yeah, that's that's what's crazy about this is Disney's brand has been, at least with the classic characters, has kind of been diluted to the point that like video games are way more exciting to kids now than Mickey Mouse, mm-hmm. you know, than any of their animated series right now. I mean, Minions is bigger than anything Disney's done lately. Yeah, it, it, Disney's progressively going downhill on their animation. And now, meanwhile, D23, again, Disney just teased they're going to have an Encanto, Coco, and maybe Villains Lands. What's beyond Big Thunder Mountain? Maybe. And oh, what's the name of Disney Animal Kingdom? Maybe we'll have, I think it was like, it, it was Mo, oh, no, it was Moana was there. Zootopia Moana. Zootopia. Yeah. Zootopia Moana. Which, that's would be, a- was Zootopia be cloned? What they're already building was it in Shanghai? Uh, I think Hong Kong. Is it Hong Kong? One of the two. Yeah, there were, there were rumors that they were actually going to take Rafiki's Planet Watch and turn that into Zootopia because you've already got the trains. So they mm-hmm. take the train to Zootopia. And fortunately, people don't use the Planet Watch, but that's like the last remnants of... The world's saddest petting zoo. The world's saddest petting zoo, yeah. But uh, like what the park was supposed to be about, which was conservation and animals and environmentalism and all that. Now it's like... Shove some more IP into that one, too. Like, well, I can't wait to see how they shove IP into the, the safari. Oh, my God. Yeah, they'll have, like, animatronics or something. The animals need to dance. <laughs> they had the animatronic on it. They took it out, remember? Because oh, it was too right. sad. It was too sad. It was too sad. I'm glad the they took it out. Dead baby <laughs> elephant. No, it was alive. His mama was dead. Oh, that's right. And I, I did not like it. That's it right. made me sad. Yes. So I'm glad they removed it. But, um, yeah, so Disney's not having a lot of things coming down the pipeline that are actually confirmed, but they have Universal breathing down their necks. So in order to stay competitive, they're going to have to pivot to trying to do what they can to start making announcements and getting some things, you know, to compete. And that takes money. So they don't have the money to be fighting with Florida. They don't have the money to be cutting costs. They don't have the money to be cutting park ticket prices and things like that. So they're going to try to find other ways to creatively get you to give up your money without you being so obvious to it. You know? Yeah, they're basically like, hey, everybody, come on back to Disney, everybody. We're about you. We're about you, fam. Honest. Don't go over to that mean, nasty universe. You know, in some weird way, it would not surprise me if a lot of the anti-J.K. Rowling outrage wasn't stirred up by people at Disney. Do you think they would get, I mean, well, yeah, they could. I don't know. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be funny if, if they didn't out, before, they're going to now. And find out in years to come, like, you don't want to go to Universal, do you? Because it's three quarters Harry Potter now. And you know, say, thanks, Neon, for telling everybody how, you know, the tickets, she gets money for it. <laughs> They'll be like, here's some money for you, Neon. No, they won't. Yeah, they, but, they won't. They don't part with their money. No, they they do not part with their money. But um, I don't know, guys. I mean, that's just I'm. I don't know. That's, so that's well. That's, that's I mean, that's part of it, right? Does not having the money? We know the whistleblower came up before, and in her argument that the park, the books for the parks, there was some weird double, you know, accounting to show it was more profitable than it was. I think that uh, look, I'll tell you the truth. I think this has been going on for years. I know that even the time I was there and had association with Disney people, that there were some things that didn't quite make sense. You know, um, you know, it would not surprise me if there was some, you know, shuffling going on over there, and they can bury that. And I, I kind of wonder if part of the reason they're, they're not doing the restructuring and all that is to be like, hey, let's just bury that. Well, that just restructured and restructured again. Yeah. But yeah, so Disney's gonna, you know, and it also benefits them with the a whole Reedy Creek being gone because now the they're not gonna have to pay for a lot of things that they should have been paying for. They still have to pay for a lot of things that you know other things, but they're gonna they're not having to pay for like updates to the fire department and all that. Yeah, I. I my my personal opinion, and I don't know for sure, but my personal opinion is they don't want to be bothered with being responsible for all that shit. They just got saddled with it years ago. It was a good deal for them at the time. But now that they're cash strapped, they're like, yeah, we really don't want to buy fire trucks. Well, you know? not just that. They could do different things and be like, oh, well, sorry, guys. Uh, we have to because, you know. Ordinances. Yeah, we yeah. don't have Reedy Creek anymore. So 
No, sorry. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, they're going to benefit, and they're going to benefit well because uh, Iger's going to make sure they do, and he knows who's asked to kiss, whose palms to grease, et cetera, et cetera. I think that the, the overarching theme of all the news coming out of the Mouse House is that Disney is cash strapped. We never, oh shit, we're screwed. Yeah, we ne we never thought we'd get to this point with Disney, but it was you know during the pandemic they had their profits cut tremendously because and they took all those loans and stuff too. People keep forgetting about that. They took a ton of loans out. They bought right before the pandemic. They bought Fox, which was a huge waste of money. It was a huge waste of money. And then they took loans on top of it. And then they lost a huge sources of revenue. The parks were closed. Disneyland was closed for what, like a year? Oh, it was like more than a year. It was like a year and a half or something. And, like that. and then a, year and a few uh, months. Uh, you know, a lot of their movies got pushed on to Disney Plus, so they didn't have the box. And then the ones they have coming out now, except for a couple, they're not doing very well. I think what they thought was going to happen is they were going to come out of the pandemic. The park attendance was going to surge, which it did, you know, for a while. Um, but I also think that they thought that every movie they put out was going to be this massive, massive hit. Now, Avatar did do good. Avatar did, as expected, did over, what, $2 billion or whatever, which is what they needed to do because it was crazy expensive. But the MCU is on the decline. Star Wars is effectively paused. Yeah, but he's been kind of making comments of that, like, oh, we it's, it's fine, but we got to do something to make it better, you know? Yeah, so now, and this is so... Those were all his acquisitions, by the way. They were. Um, so Pixar, now, too. Pixar... <laughs> Yeah, now Pixar has basically been relegated to direct to, to streaming at this point. They're not bringing it at the box office anymore. So now they're looking at possibly selling Hulu too, and uh, which I, I, I knew something was going to happen. Either they're going to merge it or sell it or something because they're putting more and more adult content on Disney Plus. And which you joked was going to happen way back when, but yeah. you thought they were you thought they would just take Hulu and merge it with Disney Plus. And right, right. But they're probably thinking, well, if we can sell it. I mean, that's what, what was going to happen with Crunchyroll, too. Originally, the plan, as I understood it from people at Warner Brothers, was Crunchyroll was going to be rolled into HBO Max. And that was like, well, we can just run anime that we want to run on HBO Max if we can sell Crunchyroll. Let's just sell it. Right. Make some money. Make some money. And the thing is with Hulu, um, they, they remember... They got the, the the controlling share of Hulu when they bought Fox. They already had a – there was them, Comcast, and Fox who owned it. So when they got Fox, they got, you know, two-thirds control or whatever it is. And the agreement was that they either – they had to sell out to Comcast by 2024, um, and that they owe Comcast a lot of money for that come next year. Well, now they don't want to pay Comcast for that, mm. I'm sure, because that gives Comcast more money. And they need – it's another sign that they need money. So yes. now there's talk they might sell it to somebody else. They're gonna they have to offer it to Comcast first, obviously. But if Comcast doesn't want it or doesn't want to spend the money on it, you know, then then they're gonna have to sell their share. Well, Comcast can still keep their share, but they're gonna have to sell their share to somebody else. And I don't know who they're gonna sell it to because and we're gonna do a video later talking about the the bank crash mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley. But, oh, shocker! But Roku's out like a half a billion dollars. They had like a half a billion dollars parked in that bank. So Roku's not gonna buy. It. Yeah, Roku doesn't. Nobody has the money to buy. Hulu, uh, except for Comcast. And Comcast would buy it just to be dicks and be like, hey, you thought you could cut the cord? Guess what? We bought Hulu. And now you got to buy your TV off of us. They could, or it could be Apple or something too. Eh, maybe. I mean, yeah. if they want to spend the money. A lot of places like, you know, Paramount, they've been, they've been like, you know, tightening their belts, you know, yeah. like HBO tightening their belts. I mean, what could potentially happen is, you know, Comcast could buy it, merge Peacock with Hulu and be like, now it's an NBC thing, you know, and, um, so I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But th this shows, again, that they're really cash strapped. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. And that's why people are like, why aren't they? You know, The reason they're not focusing and they're just going along with it. And you had the, the president of Walt well, Disney World basically saying they weren't going to fight it and saying that um, for more than 50 years, Reedy Creek Improvement District has operated the highest standards. We appreciate all the district has done. Blah, blah, blah. We are focused in the future and ready to work within the new framework. And that's why, because they it takes some off their plate, then they can blame it for other things. But right now, their focus isn't even on that. Their focus is like, holy shit, we're losing in streaming. We're losing our, you know, Marvel and Star Wars are going down the crapper. And now we have uh, Universal Orlando coming for us. It's like, they don't have time to be worried about that. They'll just do what they used to do and make sure they, they stay on their side, however it takes. I, yeah, whatever it takes. Um... I don't think people that, you know, like Disney stands are really looking at the big picture of like how 
bad it is for Disney right mm-hmm. now on so many levels. Again, Star Wars movies have been shelved indefinitely. We all know what's going on there. Well, Mar- they're saying they're coming back. Okay. Maybe supposedly they got rid of two of them, but you know. Right. Taika Waititi's supposed to be getting his and, he may- and starring in it too, apparently. Nobody wants that. No, nobody wants nobody that. Nobody wants that. Um, you know, the MCU and Star Wars shows have been declining series after series. Uh, you know, Ant-Man 3 was a bomb. I guess it did okay the first week, and after that, it just dropped off a freaking cliff. The Marvels is not looking too promising either. <laughs> the, ol- the only Go Guardians. Guardians is the only Disney uh, Marvel movie that looks like it might actually do okay this year. I think I think Guardians will probably do pretty good, unless it's complete dog shit. But I, I think it'll be okay. I think Guardians will be okay. But yeah, everything else. I mean, how far off is another Avengers movie? And who cares at this point because all the Avengers are gone. I think yeah. Disney's biggest problem is people are over Disney. Yeah. I think yeah. when the pandemic came and people saw like, oh, I don't need Disney, you know, it's just been one thing after another, um, turning people off. We had the price hikes and, you know, that was going on. Um, people were mad about that. And then the pandemic hit. And uh, well, before the pandemic, we had them, what they did, they ruined Star Wars. And the pandemic hit and people like didn't go to the parks. They were fine with not doing that. You know, some of the times they watch Disney Plus, but people were able to remove themselves more and more and now the movies are going down the the shithole the shows are going down the shithole they're just they're just they they're losing ground quickly i have seen and this is related but not related but okay so we have the pirates and princesses blog mm-hmm. and we've been doing this a long time we've been doing this a long time uh there is a definite dearth in search traffic for disney mm-hmm. and i'm seeing it with a lot of the reason I think a lot of these other Disney blogs are pivoting to more and more clickbait, and you know who they are for the most part, is because I think the general public is losing interest in Disney. They're not planning Disney trips like they were. They're not interested in Marvel and Star Wars like they were, mm-hmm. um, you know, because we had all this buildup. And then, like you said, the pandemic made it so easy to quit habits that were just habits like, oh, I, I do my Disney trip every year. I go to every Marvel movie. I go to every Star Wars movie. Yeah, and then Disney didn't help by, like, implementing so many things to make it much more difficult. Like, Genie Plus makes it so much harder. You know, Park Pass does make it so much harder. The, the fact that they have to walk it back, and, and there, there's the fiasco with the Galactic Star Cruiser, which I'm still shocked that they even went through with that. I, I, I would have been like, if something was going to get cut, it would have been a luxury item like that, or it would have reskinned it to be more accessible. But the fact that after years of being the drum that they wanted higher caliber park attendees with deeper pockets to have Bob Iger say flat out, we want to roll it back and get the middle class back, even though everything they've done up to this point shows the opposite of that. Well, it reminds me of when you used to work for the one company, I'm not going to say which one, and they had long standing customers that were smaller companies that had been with them for years and years and years. Yes. And they got new leadership in. Yes. And when new leadership came in, well, we want the, the big companies. We only want to be associated with the best of the best, even though your their work wasn't the best of the best anymore. It used to be. So they got rid of all their small clients and said, we don't want you anymore. We want the big clients. And they went after the big clients until the recession hit. And then then the big clients didn't spend the money with them and they would have had work with those small clients, but they got rid of them all and they all went to other places. Yeah. What happened was they did, they had new management come in and they, they would rather have, and I literally had the one sales guy say, we'd rather have five big clients and 50 small clients. Right. But 50 small clients would have still been there. Right. Cause you, you lose a fifth of your business or two fifths of your business. That's a huge hit. Whereas if you lose a couple of your smaller clients, you know, you can still rebound. And that's the thing. Everybody you know, wants to put all their eggs into one basket. And the thing is that Disney is positioned as a luxury item. And when people are looking at the economy and they're looking at their own personal situation, it's a very easy thing to cut. Mm-hmm. You know, like we don't do our Disney trip this year. Or we, you know, we don't do it for another three or four years because I've been there. And guess what? There, there aren't going to be any new rides anyway. So I'll just, and people have literally said this before, like, I'll go back to Disney when they have, new rides. Well, wait or, a few years and then yeah. go, you know, and then take one big trip. You know, one that's big what trip. they do. Yeah. Yep. And Disney, you know, did it to themselves and they got rid of all their small people they for these whales. The whales are going to spend money. They're not going to, they're not going to go to Disney. They're going to go to like real Europe. And it's probably cheaper, you know, and it's, it's, it's really stupid. Disney's made a lot of missteps. A lot of them have been under Bob Iger. Um, so let's bring him back because that'll fix everything. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, actually, if they were going to bring somebody back, I would have preferred Eisner, but that's my own personal. Mm -hmm. And people were like, man, they were demonizing Eisner, but I'm like, he was fantastic compared to what we got now. Yeah, because so. they're still doing similar things he did, but he did it better and still yes. did, and, and still maintained. Yes. So anyway, this has been a long video. We are sorry, but there was a lot to cover. All right, so we're going to wrap it up then? Yes. All right, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Check out piratesandprincesses.net for objective Disney news if you still care. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.